last time we started understanding about the error analysis okay so we discussed that there are uh, different methods in error analysis specifically human error analysis in in a particular system right uh, so uh, i mentioned in this particular course we will be discussing two major technique through which we we go for the error analysis one is sherpa which is uh, which takes care about the systemic analysis of the human error okay the next that we supposed to discuss today that is the task analysis for error identification or we call it as TAFI. Okay. So, uh, from the nomenclature you do understand what we will be doing, we will be doing a task analysis. From that particular task analysis we will try to understand or we will try to identify the error in a particular system. So, we will take as as we are going in this particular course that you know first we are understanding a particular topic and then we are going for the example. Here also we will go the in the same way first we will understand the methodology uh, or how do we take uh, or how do we conduct the uh, task analysis for error identification this particular method and then we will take up an, a, a small example and then we will uh, go for the advantage disadvantage and different tools that is required for this particular analysis ok. So, let us understand uh, small introduction or let us discuss about the small introduction of this particular tool. Here also same thing this particular tool or this particular method is not a very old method ok. Over the period of time uh, when uh, system became more complex in nature specifically when there is a lot of development in the aeronautical uh, science uh, there are a lot of uh, you know development in the uh, aerospace engineering then uh, you know complex system like nuclear power system. So, for all these cases uh, we realized you know the scientists those days realized that there are lot of you know uh, due to lot of human error there are chances of accidents and there was the major demand that we should identify we should understand or we should uh, we should pick them as an error or we should um, identify them on uh, before the accident happens if we can do this type of identification in the system uh, uh, you know prior to implement any any kind of uh, system in place what will happen there will be less chance of accident we are not saying there will be no accident however the chances of accidents will be less and the precautionary measures can be deployed uh, beforehand ok. So, if there is a high chance of you know accident so there is uh, there is a system where there is uh, possibilities of uh, you know error is very high in that case what will happen we can develop a precautionary measure measurement or we can design the system in such a way so that if by chance that error happens also there will be another uh, system which can take care of the error and the system will not malfunction ok. So, uh, from that perspective these error analysis are very very important and it helps uh, to uh, uh, helps to you know function the, uh, the bigger system in very uh, you know uh, error free manner or uh, less with less error uh, activities ok. And also here the decision making are very very important because if an error happen then if the decision is correct to countermeasure that particular error we will be able to handle the situation very nicely otherwise there will be a chance that the whole system will malfunction and the cost will be a uh, cost for this particular accident or particular that hazardous situation will be very high. So, identifying error is really an important uh, step to control the whole environment ok. So, let us begin with the task analysis of error identification. So, this particular method uh, helps or enables people 
to predict again i am saying this is a predictive method okay so uh, similarly as in 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 other other areas like okay in sherpa also we try to predict it okay so uh, to predict the errors in the use of a device by modeling the interaction between the user and device so here what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand the user and the device how they are interacting with each other so if we understand those interaction properly what will happen so that will give us an understanding what are the possible failure are there in those interaction and what are the sources of those error okay so this method actually what we will do we will uh, model the interaction between the user and the device so this technique is not very old as i mentioned earlier also it's a uh, in 1991 stanton and baber you know they they actually came out with this particular method so this technique makes the assumption that actions are constrained by the state of the particular product that we are currently going to discuss at any particular point in the interaction so suppose we are uh, i am taking this lecture through a device right okay so there is a monitor through uh, where this uh, presentation is being displayed and i am looking at it and i am talking to uh, the camera right now if this is a particular system so i am going to i am i am actually interacting with camera and also with the uh, this particular monitor now each interaction with this monitor and the camera can be uh, you know detail it out and their possible error erroneous act action can be identified to understand what are the possible way to malfunction this particular process okay so here is a display if by mistake my uh, no it's it's a uh, no touch screen uh, system right so if by mistake i touch the screen the you don't know slide will move so if it is not required still i am by mistake i am you know taking a chance to put my finger on the screen if the slide will move so again it's an error right so how i am interacting with my device you know we need to understand those detail and we need to understand what are the possible errors may come so we'll take those examples in the next uh, phase of the presentation so let us know more about this particular system uh, so this particular diagram shows that how the uh, there is a device and there is a human means the operator and it's an interface how they are interacting with each other to run this particular system so here you can see this is the user interface this is very important because from this particular point what will happen the user will get the information back user will get the information back from the device right so first let us understand there is an information there is an information which is going as an input to the processing unit of the system now once there is an input in the device and it perceived by the processing unit what will happen there will be a process and there will be a generation of an output right so input then processing and then output then this can be with a particular uh, material particular information particular action many things can be possible now when there is an output possibilities are there it can create some hazardous situation now once there is an output output will where it will go output will be going to the user as a feedback system for the through the user interface right so once there is a uh, th there is an output what will happen the user this particular user will perceive this output through their perception okay so once they perceive 
they will recognize that particular information and there will be action there will be action okay that action again will go back as an input to the system now here in this particular action there are possibilities that uh, there will they there will be you know uh, error and it can create an a hazardous situation right so both both cases where the in output is there and the action performed by the human is there possible are possibilities are there to have an hazardous situation and if we identify these users error beforehand then we will be able to control these hazardous situation through some control measures of course we cannot say there will be no error if human is working in a particular situation for different reasons different uh, causal factors are there which may cause the uh, no generation of error human error okay however we can definitely control it if we can predict it beforehand and we can have some control measure now here point is the decision making if there there is some error if we can identify it properly or we have an uh, identification method to identify that error then definitely the human can take a better decision to control that hazard so if error happens also the system will not malfunction drastically okay there are some control measures which will control it and the system will continue to perform with uh, with proper activities okay so that's why the I, this particular analysis this particular method uh, is very important when there is a task to be performed and there is an interaction between the device and the user okay so when there is a uh, there is an interaction in the system the uh, user and the device of course we can use this particular method to predict the possible errors and to uh, based on the possible errors what we can do we can have our control measures ready okay so we can design the training we can design uh, the you know um, uh, 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 facilities to 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 uh, control that particular um, accidents and many other things depending on the context so let us move further so this is an example where there is a ticket vending machine and the human is coming and putting the uh, no coins uh, or uh, the money to the ticket vending machine and the, uh, the uh, he or she is receiving the ticket back so there is definite interaction point that interaction points are two two types one is ticket vending machine is asking for money and ticket vending machine is giving the ticket to the human okay so error can happen both the cases when when there is an user user they are giving a command they are giving a command to the uh, ticket vending machine and ticket vending machine the first uh, no first activity towards the vending machine by the human is inserting money so here uh, while inserting mon money there can be an error if the position of the uh, no money collection is not correct or not recognized by the human there is a possibility to do an error if the person is not in a position to reach that particular place or reach that particular point of the machine is uh, is not possible to hand you uh, know uh, reach by the person there can be error okay if the person is not in a position to read the information uh, you know displayed in the system what is the next step to be performed there can be an error okay so there can be human error for different places for different reason okay so there we can 
what are the possible pred, uh, no error points we can predict the another portion will be when the machine is actually giving you the ticket how to collect it first is identifying the position from where the person need to collect the ticket collect the ticket how long the vending machine hold the ticket in the same position it may happen the system is designed in such a way after maybe 30 seconds or maybe 15 seconds the ticket will go back as it happens in the atm in 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 case of atm right so if you don't understand the whole process the there will be an error performed by the human so in this particular ticket vending machine what we can do if we do this taffy we can understand what are the possible place or what are the possible interactions are there where the you know human error can come in and cause the malfunction of the whole system so based on the how successfully we predict these errors we will be able to design the the machine nicely or we will be able to design the machine in such a way so that human are bound to not to do any error okay they will be prohibited so so designers can help to design that in the whole machine so system will be designed in that way so this the success or failure of this particular interaction definitely will depend on how closely they were able to determine the match between the script and the actual operation of the machine okay so how like when they are saying insert money and how long this particular action will be active the if human don't understand or human uh, can't you know reciprocate that particular timing the machine will malfunction so the the kind of understanding you no know, perception and after perceiving the information how they are acting upon it okay so do they need change or do they need exact money what is the kind of information they are displaying okay so all these things are very important if we if we design this uh, if we before we design this we understand these possible errors we, what will happen we will be able to design the system perfectly okay perfectly i might, i can't say it will be complete error free but as much as possible we can reduce the error okay now when we talk about taffy of course uh, there are steps that to be followed as we did in sherpa in or any other previous method that uh, no step by step we should go ahead again hierarchical task analysis is an inevitable uh, method where you know every uh, wherever we are going for the cognitive task analysis this hierarchical task an analysis is the initial stage because this actually gives you the basic platform to analyze the whole system so here also in case of taffy we'll start with hierarchical task analysis so data can be retrieved from your previous study if you have already done the hierarchical task analysis for the system you can use the same data once you have your hierarchical task analysis data what you will do you will go for the state space diagram state space diagram ssd and then the transition matrix transition matrix means from one state how do you transit from one to another that is the transition matrix you can draw now in hierarchical task analysis uh, it is performed to uh, to model the human side of the interaction so here the objective major objective is to understand the uh, human actions okay in the hierarchical for this taffy when we will be doing hierarchical task analysis we will be majorly concentrate on the human action because in the whole system we are actually identifying or predicting the uh, human error 
okay so it is related to the goals and task of course uh, whenever we do hta uh, we we look for the goal and to achieve those goals what are the tasks to be followed okay so it is uh, directed at a specific particular goal and it allows the consideration of task sequence task sequence that is the major uh, no uh, or i can say basic rule of hta in ssd like space state diagram what exactly we try to do it represents the behavior of the artifact so if there is an action by the human what is the behavior of that particular artifact when the human is doing you know uh, interacting with that so that state of artifact we are trying to understand through the state space diagram and in the transition matrix it is devised to display the state transition during device use okay so if i am using a particular device what are the transition is happening from one to another so that matrix need to be derived in this particular so basically we have three major uh, no steps to be followed in uh, staffy first is hta from human perspective human uh, activity per perspective then state space diagram and the transition matrix let us uh, do it in detail so as i mentioned hta without hta we cannot go ahead so uh, once this goal of this particular task is being selected the analysis proceed to the constructing the state sp space diagram for the device operation okay and uh, for for taffy always what we try to do we select one goal one basic goal and then we analyze maybe if if in the whole system there are two three goals we will take those goals separately and once the hta is being established we will connect them so then it becomes very easy uh, for us to create that blueprint okay so it's not that in a we will take a very big goal no uh, we will take small goals and small uh, two three goals if is required then we will connect them so here for an example we try to understand if we want to boil a glass of water or a cup of water in a electrical kettle so first the major objective or major goal is boiling the kettle so if that is so first step is you know fill the kettle because you have to understand if there is water or not so fill the kettle switch the kettle that you know you have to switch it on and the check the water in the kettle water level then uh, if it is boiling then you switch it off and the pour the water okay so if if that so in switch on plug in switch on to do a switch on switching on that particular um, for that particular bottle what you need to do you have to either first plug on uh, plug in that uh, socket and then turn on the power if it is already plugged in then you may need to skip that particular step whereas pouring the uh, water it's lift the uh, kettle direct that particular spout take to the socket and you know replace it with the kettle so that way you can do it whereas when we are talking about the filling the kettle there are few more steps so uh, take it to the tap that particular kettle you need to take it to the tap turn on the water check the level uh, turn off the water and tilt that kettle okay you can just check the water level and you make it so that way you can create your hta now once you have that hta ready with you you can take it further for your ssd or we can call it space state space diagram so a state space diagram consists of series of states series okay it's not a single okay once you have uh, hta you can have series of states through which the device passes 
from a starting state to the goal state one position so here uh, water is cold and it is passing through steps different steps and it is a boiled water okay so one state to another state for each series of states there will be a current state and a set of possible exit to each state so here if we take this statement so boiling water it may happen i need just warm water i can i can switch it off at any point of time uh, when i feel it is warm right so any exit point so those exit points we need to identify numbered that plants from the hta are then mapped onto the ssd it indicates which human action take the device from one state to another state so for boiling kettle maybe human action is switching off the that particular uh, switch right so uh, you are uh, we are uh, going and switching it off okay so that may be an human action it may happen the switch is on uh you 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 are not uh, bothered so if what you do electrical kettle you just take it out from the base plate so these are the human action so if you don't want that water to go at the boiling state you are you want only warm water you can take it out okay so which human action is actually deciding that this is the exit point so it indicates which human action take the device from one state to another state so that is the state space diagram you have to design uh, you have to understand it. you have to predict it or analyze it okay so the plans uh, are mapped onto the state transition so from one state to another which transition it is and the potential state dependent hazards so here i said if you switch it off without boiling maybe there is a less chance of error or there, there is a less chance of accident whereas you if you just take that particular uh, kettle out from the base uh, platform there is always a chance of any kind of electrical accidents right so what action can cause an hazard what action can cause a hazard uh, hazardous situation in that particular system you need to identify that so potential state dependent hazard have also been identified in this particular state so this is the you know uh, state space diagram possible state state space diagram for this electrical kettle so you have first initially no water you are weighing the balance uh, right? you are trying to understand uh, can be shock shock heat shock system uh, steam uh, steam heat and then spillage okay you are draining it now from here you can see in there can be different exit point so uh, know when you are actually there is no water if it is it is empty waiting to be filled from here you can directly go for the you know shock empty you are actually switching on there is a possibility of an accident okay whereas it is empty and you are trying to pour the water okay so there is an accident so 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 that way you need to really understand these interaction these interactions understanding these interactions are very very important for each step see you can see from one two three four five for each state you can go directly to the by mistake you can pour the water and there is a hazardous situation there is a hazardous situation right it's an error it's a error performed by human being so if we design the kettle in such a way or if we design the whole system in such a way that if we try to perform any one of these action system will create an alert that you are doing mistake automatically the person who is actually operating 
he or she will stop performing doing that and the system will be safe right so this way we can use the state space diagram uh, to understand or to predict or identify the human error in the whole system now of course transition matrix is very important to understand because if we don't understand the transition matrix we will not be able to identify what are exact interaction point interaction point between the human and machine and where we should start our intervention where we are going to start our intervention design intervention safety intervention training intervention whatever interventions we need to do where to start okay if we don't understand this transition matrix so transition matrix is the most important part of the analysis from the point of view of you improving the usability as I mentioned if we do not understand these interaction we really do not know how do we redesign the whole system how do we start the training program okay what is the kind of manual I should write before we introduce a particular uh, product in the market okay so this transition matrix is very very important for for any kind of you know such such uh, analysis so all possible states are entered as you know headers on the matrix and the cell represent the state transition and then filled in the in one of three ways okay first one here i do just little correction this a should be capital and it should come here as like this okay so, if the transition is de deemed as just impossible, so you term it as A, okay, uh, entered into that particular cell. If the transition is deemed possible and desirable uh, and this is legal transition, then we term this as L and if it is uh, possible but undesirable. Okay, one is just impossible, Tran this particular transition is not really possible, then it is A, where whereas if it is possible and legal, it is desirable, then it is L. In third case, it is possible but it is not desirable, that means illegal, so it is I, so A, L and I, okay, so that way we will be writing these transitions so these denominations like these representations are very important to know so let us see this okay for 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 the same example boiling that kettle so let us understand so initially this these are the you know uh, from different state and to the state so from this these states it can go to these state so we just created this matrix and so here i mentioned l means legal uh, possibilities i means possible however it is illegal and the each type of error we marked as a b c d e f g like this okay like a b c d e f g and then l5 this is i these are all i okay not legal okay okay so this way the transition matrix can be created and uh, for this manual electrical hit hit uh, no kettle and from there you can understand where the design intervention can be possible to introduce or while writing the manual of this particular heater the user's guideline you can inform the user how to use it what are the possible uh, point where the accidents can happen okay so if you you have this matrix ready with you we will be able to create the guideline very nicely otherwise you will not be able to understand where the possible interaction and how the intra if that there is a chance 
uh, to have some hazardous situation in that particular interaction, how do you miss it? Okay. So, this interactions understanding is very, very important and here the process of TAFI actually ends. Okay. So, first we do the hierarchical task analysis, then we go for the SSD state space diagram. We are trying to understanding the positions of those uh, state when the interactions are happening and the exit points that we understand in the state space diagram and then we start with uh, doing the interaction matrix and transition matrix from one state to another state how do we transit okay and there what are the possible errors are uh, errors are there or predicted errors okay and then we complete this matrix once we complete this matrix we get the data and we start our intervention program this is the error description and design solution for a simple manual electrical kettle so you can see from these transition we have written if it happens one two three like first one from empty to directly if we go for these three okay this particular position then what will you know, switch the empty kettle on so what is the uh, design solution the uh, no transparent kettle wall so if you have a transparent kettle wall you can easily understand yes this this kettle is not filled right so if it has a metal wall then you cannot see okay so you make it transparent it's a design intervention and you can definitely uh, avoid this error if 1 to 7 so pour the empty kettle so what will happen again uh, you know if it is a transparent wall you can you know avoid this or link to the water supply directly you are linking to the water supply now 2 to 7 so pour the cold water you have not switch it on so you have a filled water water is filled in the kettle however you missed this 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 and this and you are directly going for the pouring so what will happen that you know constant hot water or auto heat uh, when the kettle is placed on the bottle so that way you all can avoid so these all are the varieties of design solution for these possible errors Okay, 5 to 7, if you are skipping from 5 to 7, so pouring the boiling water before turning off the switch, so auto cut off. As soon as you take that kettle out, the power will be auto cut. Okay, so there will be less chance of accident. So, you understand that uh, you know, boiling a glass of water in a particular electrical kettle, it looks very, very simple. However, the whole uh, job or whole system has so much of possibilities that errors may happen and you, you face some kind of accident and to avoid these accidents, these possible intervention or these possible redesigning elements can be taken care of. Okay? So, if you keep on increasing these factors in your product what will happen the cost or also will go high also the safety factor of that product will increase the less chance of error will be and the whole system will function properly okay so this way this taffy will help you to function the system perfectly okay uh, so, TAFI actually enables the analyst to model the interaction between human action and the system uh, states. This can be used to identify the potential errors and consider the task flow in a goal oriented scenario. Here the goal was if you have a glass of water cold water you are actually going to boil it that was the goal and to do so what are the steps to be followed? So, TAFI can also be used to evaluate the existing system. It is not that you always do it beforehand. If you have an existing system, you can use TAFI, you use the result and you design the training method, you design the control measure 
in the for the whole system. So, these are the uh, no, series of decision stages involved in the Taffy technique. So, you know, it starts here. So, uh, define and uh, define the components and the material where it goes for the HTA using HTA you define the goal and define the uh, you know, system state for specific operation that is through SSD. Once you have HTA and SSD, so you define the uh, you know, transition between uh, state on SSD from action and plans, okay, actions and plans on HTA to produce that particular taffy and you draw this transition matrix. So, drawing this transition matrix is very, very important and how you are uh, no, drawing this transition matrix uh, correctly will, will actually uh, the, uh, no, will tell you uh, how correct, uh, no, how beneficial your taffy is for the whole system. So, uh, being at cell 1 not 1 what you can do if it is possible from move uh, from A to B or not you need to check if it is possible then go this direction otherwise do go this direction. So, that way you keep on doing. So, if it is you know L means possible legal movement then definitely you can go from any uh, other cell and then you can go for the stopping the uh, activity ok. So, this is a series of decisions where you can you can take uh, manual decisions and you can perform the activity nicely ok. So, these are the steps to be followed. So, here I mentioned input and output in square of this ash color that these are the operation these all are the operation ok. And in the you know task decision like these are the decisions decision to be made. So, these are the important decisions where you can have some kind of intervention. So, advantages it is very much structured and thorough procedure and it sounds very much theoretical and underpinning like it is it is not that many other underlying things are there it is very clear flexible and very generic method it is not that uh, you know specific case only you can do or other case you cannot do it is a very generic method. So, that is that is why uh, researchers prefer to uh, get results from taffy and improve the situation whereas there are again some disadvantages. So, it is not a rapid technique because you have to depend on the HTA and HTA takes always lot of time along with SSD. It is not only HTA it needs SSD. So, of course, uh, it, it is a time consuming requires some skill of course, uh, I already mentioned in all other um, previous uh, lectures that H HTA needs uh, skill of course, SSD also needs skill. So, it is a skilled based task and limited to goal directed behavior. If there is no specific goal has been identified in the whole system, you will not be able to perform this. So, let us uh, understand the what are the tools required. Uh, it needs only pen and paper. Currently, uh, I have no idea that if there is any software or any any kind of you know uh, web version is available. Uh, however, there is a possibility to develop some kind of algorithm uh, to translate the HT and SSD data into the transition matrix creation. However, still now uh, uh, as per my knowledge, there is no such thing available. Although there are uh, software supports which actually helps the HTA that we mentioned in earlier uh, lectures also. Uh, here Stanton mentioned that it takes around 3 hours kind of um, time to train a person how to perform taffy. However, it is absolutely based on the previous knowledge and the uh, acceptance capacity of that particular researcher ok. So, it is not fixed it can take more more hours or it can take less hours ok. 
so however this is quite easy process as per I understand and it is a very generic process so that you can implement it uh, at any system and you can identify or predict the, uh, the human error for your system. So that is all uh, for today. Uh, I hope you all understood the error identification method. So first one was Sherpa and second one was for uh, Taffy. It is not only Sherpa and Taffy, there are many other methods. However, these are the two major methods that we actually practice uh, to identify the human error in system in broader cases. Okay. Thank you for today. We will start the next session next in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.